went in the coffee. Whoops. <laughs> what else is on your needles? I can't even repeat what Dan just said. Please continue, Caller. Okay, I will. So I'm on the. Um, I am knitting. What? You said it. Yeah, you interpreted it. Oh, get on. What's happened to this? <laughs> Dan? Oh, we can't be having that. I'm afraid I need a coffee rather urgently. Because there was no prompt from me beforehand. I don't feel like you're being sarcastic at all. There was no when telling you off. Praise me. Every stitch has been excruciating. Well, this is what I mean. Isn't it? Why am I saying that? Not yet. Just give me a minute. All in good time. That's it. No, it's not. Welcome everyone to episode 88. Yes, it's December the 1st. Wow. Goodness gracious me, yeah. that's un isn't it unbelievable? It is really, yeah. Already. Well no, uh, it doesn't feel like a particularly short year this one. No, that's very true actually. In fact, at no point yeah. has it felt short. It's felt like a long time since last Christmas, yes. I think. Most yeah, definitely, yeah. it's felt, and there's nothing wrong with that at no, all. No, no, no. Because there's nothing worse, is there, than your life no. flying by at the rate of lightning bolts, which is what seems to happen, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's the 1st of December, and you know what that means. That means it's time to launch the Bakery Bears at Advent Calendar. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. And for the first time ever, we're going to actually launch it live on the show. Well, no, that sounds like we're going to do not the live. first window live. <laughs> it's not live. That would be fun and interesting and, and a challenge. No, as Kay says, it's not live on the show. We're going to open our first little video window yep. later on in the show. We thought that would be nice. This tradition started, it started actually, I did a Christmas card, didn't I, that oh, first yeah, year. that's true, yeah. And I did a Christmas card and that was to thank you after I'd had treatment and, and everything and People loved that so much, we thought the year after we would do a little advent calendar. Yeah. And they enjoyed that so much, we did it again last year. Yeah. But this year, we've approached it in a very different way. We have. Yes. Yeah. And we've already done... Filming for that start... When did it start? Just a few days ago. Last week? Yes. Yeah. And the mistake that we made last year was we filmed an awful lot of it prior to Christmas. Mm. And... Uh, it, the year before that, actually, the advent calendar came about at such a late stage. Yeah. I sort of rushed around like yeah, a lunatic, yeah. getting all of it, it done. It was a last minute decision, kind yeah. of thing, wasn't it? So this year actually has been the first year where we've come oh. at it with a plan. Yeah. A really sort of conducive one day at a time. But we wanted to do it so that we did it whilst it was in that season. Yeah. You know, so it, it, to capture the yeah. magic of Christmas, yeah. which I hope. It certainly felt like on yeah. the first day of filming. We're going out again on Monday to do some more, um, and then we'll be filming actually right the way through yeah. the Christmas season, yeah. which would be great fun. And isn't it interesting how at this time of year there seems to be lots of seasonal illnesses? Oh, it's horrible, isn't it? Flying around the place. It's rubbish. How have you been, Kay? Well, I've been okay, apart from a horrible cold sore. <laughs> it actually. I mean, very luckily, I felt the sort of tingle the day after we recorded the last podcast. I was dyeing some yarn and I was like, hmm, that doesn't feel right. And then, you know, as soon as I felt that tingle, I literally walked out the door and went down to the chemist and got some of the stuff um, and put start putting it on straight away. So I think that did help a bit. But the next day, I looked like I'd been punched in the face. It was just absolutely awful. And it, I mean, it's, it's gone now, yeah. but it took probably about 10 days to go completely. Which is funny, because so that the, is exactly... the timing worked perfectly. If it had been, I, I said to Dan, there's no way I could have recorded with my face looking like that. Absolutely no well, way. No. So I don't know what we would have done, honestly. I didn't, I don't think I went out of the house for three days. It was so bad. I was like, I can't have anybody seeing me like this. No, in fact, I did. I had to go to the supermarket. So I just was like this. <laughs> I just kept my head down the whole time. It's funny though, isn't it, how the body seems to know? You know, there's so many people who go off on holiday and yeah. get ill. Yeah. It's like I your body knows. Usually, when... yeah, normally you, 
I think people do get ill, don't they, when they, they're on holiday from work because I think it is that feeling of just letting yourself relax and letting yourself go and you, you come off the treadmill kind of thing and I think your body just goes, oh, right, OK, you can be ill now. So perhaps there was an element of that in your Kelso appearing. Perhaps I don't know. It just held off until you'd done your filming for yeah, that week. So. and then maybe I shall so. spring up. Yeah, it was so sore. I can't tell you how sore I was. It was a whopper. Absolutely miserable with it, yeah. And the horrible. Yeah. I haven't had one for probably 30 odd years. I can't even remember the last time I had one. And they're just disgusting, aren't they? And then, you didn't seem particularly miserable with it. I was miserable. Well, I think you dealt with it extremely well, to be honest. Oh, right. Well, I felt miserable inside. <laughs> Well, I, I think I would have been an awful lot more annoyed about it than, than you came yeah. across. So, well done you. And I've had a cold as well, but yeah. we don't think that's seasonal. We think that's just overdoing it. Yeah. I've been putting in the miles, you see. Putting in the fog along miles. Yeah. And we'll be doing a, fog, a full fog along update later on in the show. Um, so we'll be updating the knitters and we'll be updating the runners and finding out where we are prior to, cool. can you believe, the final month... Of the run and wow. the knit. Gosh, what are we going to do next year? Have to think oh, about crumbs. That. Have to think about that, won't we? Our front door. Oh, don't. Oh, dear. Oh. So we're, we're setting off out. We're all togged up, ready to go for some advent calendar filming. Yeah. And we go to the front door and unlock it and walk out the door, shut it behind me, turn the key to lock it, and it wouldn't lock. Wouldn't lock. So, thankfully, 24-hour locksmiths abound. You give them a call, out they come. But fr frustration, wow. in the, isn't it frustrating how things, you know, a lock should be a lock, shouldn't it? There shouldn't be 4,000 so different ones. Yeah, so many different ones. And I think the the gears had gone inside it or something, he said. That's right. So, he, so, so the, it the was, gears had gone in the lock, so he basically... When you're trying to engage, deadbolt, you know, when you lift The lock it up would actually and, work. But engaging it, yeah, it, it, was, it wouldn't. No. So then you couldn't, you couldn't turn the corner and lock it. So I had to order a part. So he said, he said, first of all, I was like, well, how are we going to lock it? And he couldn't really come up with much of an idea. And then I worked out if you shut the door and halfway did it, turn the key, left it in, it was locked. So I was like, okay, that's fine. He said, oh, we'll just use it like that then. So I did go out, come back in, screw drops out. <laughs> Now, that's not good, is it, on your front door? If a screw's dropping out, then, hold on a minute, if someone's trying to get in, that makes things an awful lot easier. Mm. So I thought, right, I'll put the screw back in. So I put the screw back in, tried to shut the door. It wouldn't even shut. The, like, bolts, you know, the bolts... The mechanism was stuck open. The bolts were, were locked out, so you couldn't physically shut the door. And this was at about four in the it's afternoon. It's getting dark. It's freezing. I've stood there in my coat and I can't shut the door. So I'm like, right, okay, I'll phone up and I'll tell him. So I did. I phone up and told him. Someone phoned me about half an hour later, stood in the still, doorway, yeah. still no phone. So I thought, right, I'll phone him back. So I told someone else, a bit firmer this time. He'll phone you back in just a moment. It was another half an hour. Yeah, yeah. Another half an hour. I was actually just in the process of phoning them up again to go ballistic and the locksmith phones. And the issue was, it's always the same, isn't it? When you put in an extra level between the person who's telling a story mm. and the person who's receiving the story, the locksmith thought that the message was that we couldn't lock the door. Mm. Not that the door was open and we couldn't physically even close the door. <laughs> so what did he tell me? Just knock it with a hammer. Just whack the, you know, the bolts with a hammer to get them back in the door. Why is that the answer to everything, isn't it? The answer to everything seems to be, just give it a knock with a hammer. The amount of times I've been told that, mm. certainly with things around the house. I'll turn so, it off and on. Yeah, turn it off and on. It's either yeah. turn it off and yeah. on or hit it with a hammer. It's electronic, yeah. So knocked it and I, I said to him, said to him, if I do this, will you be able to get the door open again? Oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry. So, so back we managed he comes. To, so we locked the door. And then it was two days before he, he came back. The part didn't arrive or something. It so was we, more than two days. It wasn't. It, it felt like ages. Was it only two days? It was two days. Well, two days too late. The, the it, longest days ever. So he back he comes. Back. Well, what happened? Well, we told him we were out that day. We'd waited in the previous day because he said it was going to be that day and it wasn't. And we had to go out and do some filming that day. So... We said, look, we'll be back in at four. He was like, right, I'll be there at four. So, I mean, luckily I was in. Dan had gone to get Bryony and I stayed 
um, at home. So it was about 20 to 4 and he knocks on the door and I'm like, oh, this is marvellous. I, I don't like dealing with stuff like this for starters. I'm just, I like, you know, I've got a man and that's, some people wouldn't agree with me on that point, I realised. But look, I, li- look, I don't like to deal with household facts, things like this. The facts are this. We are old-fashioned. Everyone can live how they want to live. Yeah. We are old-fashioned. Yeah, I yeah. deal with things like that. Yeah, I just, yeah. Kay so, deals with things like selecting me yarn for projects. Yeah. So anyway, he knocks on the door. I thought, what on earth am I going to do? I can't open the door. So I'm shouting at him through the door. It's got, like, glass panels in it. And I'm shouting at him, you know, I can't, the door won't open. He's like, it won't even open. I said, no. So I shoved him the keys through the letterbox. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I didn't tell you that. I shoved him the keys through the letterbox. Of course, he couldn't open it. So then he had to, I had to to bring him all the way around the back, which is a little walk, all the way around the back, through the kitchen to the front door. He then starts what sounded like he was just literally knocking the house down. (laughs) Honestly, and what he was doing, the the only thing he could do was to try and shear the bolts. So he's got a what are they called? A chisel, and he's got a hammer in between the you know the door. And I thought, what damage is this going to be doing to my door frame? I can't even think about it. I was so stressed, and he's just whacking the absolute daylights out of this door. Thankfully, after much wailing and gnashing of teeth, the door yeah. is fixed. Yeah. And, you know, it, it is a funny feeling, isn't it? I don't know if that's ever happened to you before, but it's such a funny feeling when your front door's not working because, yeah. you know, it is like it's your barrier between what's out there and what's in here and you just want it sorted. <laughs> but, I can't but, shut me door! But, you know, thankfully, it's now done. And actually, it does feel... It feels pretty good. It feels way better than it ever felt before. Sorted. This is, of course, though, it's a knitting podcast. Yes. And whilst we have lots of exciting Christmassy things to come right now, it's time for us to find out, Kay Jones, what's on your needles? Yay. Well, I'm still in the sock mode, everyone, hence our little sign today. Many, many, many socks. She should have said, but I couldn't fit that on. I'm working, first of all, on Bryony's pair of socks for Christmas. I've got the first one done. This is in the London House Yarns, if you remember, the Grimold, Christmas at Grimold Place from London House Yarns. And it's the Sparkly Stellina base. And I've got one sock done and I'm working on the second. So I'll show you the first sock that's all finished. Ooh, look at that. It's so sparkly. It's very sparkly. I wonder if the The sparkles never transfer properly, do they, on screen? So you probably can't see them. There's just a slight glitter. But it is incredibly sparkly to look at. It's really, really lovely. And you can see I used the mini that came with it. I did a normal just um, slip stitch heel and I did a square heel turn. I've got thoughts about this square heel turn now, though. Yes. I am wondering now, and I'm going to see how this pair fits and I'm going to see how... I've I've knit a pair for each of us now using this heel. So I'm going to see how those ones fit before I make a final decision. But the thing that I'm not keen on is the fact that you don't have as many stitches across here. Because your gusset decreases. As you can see with the gusset, it's quite a short gusset. That's the square heel turn. Yeah, because you've got less stitches on at the end of your heel yeah. turn than with like a French heel, which means, you know, obviously you've got less stitches across here, which if you've not got a particularly high arch, then that wouldn't pose a problem. But I mean, I've got a high arch. Your feet across here are just incredibly broad. I don't know that it's your arch in particular. You've just got very wide I'm feet. just big. Yeah. So I'm going to see how these fit, but I think I might go back to just a normal French heel. I'm knitting another sock, which I'll show you. And I've gone back to a normal French heel on that one. And I've also done something else on that one as well, just to see if it makes a difference that I'll talk about. But this one's finished. But look what happened. Can you see? Look at the toe. Can oh, you see? Yeah. Look at that. Can you see that line of green? Someone accidentally coloured in a couple of I mean, of for goodness sake. Whoops. It was about six inches of yarn, not even that probably, probably three inches right on the toe. That's unbelievable, isn't it? What can you do about that? There's nothing you can do about that. You know, I certainly wasn't going to cut the yarn at that point. No. 
Oh no. No, uh, you know, I could have, I mean, I could have gone back a row, couldn't I, and ki- kitchened a row sooner, but that would have produced a more, slightly shorter toe, and it's more flat across the top, which, you know, is fine if you've got a kind of square foot, but most feet are more rounded like that, aren't they? So anyway, it is what it is. Hopefully it won't happen on the next one, but I can't guarantee that. It's okay, that little bit it's of a It's fine. I mean, Bryony's not going to notice no. it. She, she loves them, aren't they? I mean, they're so pretty, aren't they pretty? They really Look at the colours. Goodness. And it did, you can see here on the gusset, I mean, this is why I did the Dutch heel, because it's self-striping. And I didn't want to interrupt the stripes too much. Hey, hold on a minute. I did a square um, heel for Bryony and it fits her brilliantly. Yeah, I mean... So for her, I think that'll be bang on. Yeah, if it's fine for her, it's really just for you that I think we well, might have an issue. If we think about um, this logically, it makes absolute sense, doesn't it, that the different heels are designed to give different fits. Mm, so that mm. must be designed for people like, like B, who don't have quite so much... Of a high arch, yeah. yeah. Whereas, we'll but see. as you say, it's not just people with high arches, it's just big people. Yeah, you know, if your feet are broad. You can see the red stripe there is thinner than the rest. It's not so bad on that side. That's just what happens, you know, and if you knit, you know, standard heel flap and heel turn with self-striping yarns, it's going to happen. There's really no way of avoiding it. I don't think. I always put in a contrast colour when I'm doing self-striping to, to sort of minimise it. What's always going to happen? Um, you're always going to get a thinner stripe here. Oh, crumbs. Because, That's all you know, right. Because, yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's just that the OCD part of me likes it to be just right. And this is why, historically, I don't knit that many self-striping socks no. because that kind of irks me a little bit. But no one... You know, it's not like Bryony's going to look at it and go, oh, look at that stripe there. It's one row less than the others. So I don't know why I get so hung up about it. No, just it's relax. Crazy, I, mean, I can't believe it? that you've even said that, to be honest. I didn't oh, even right. know that that was an issue for you. Oh, yeah, it is an issue for me. Um, and I'm on the second one. I've got the second one on the go. And I worked on this this morning. I finished the rib. I'm just, I've knit down that much. So this is just 64 stitches, 2.25 millimetre needles, chow goose, which I'm still loving. I am finding that one pair, the two and a half millimetres, I don't know why, but they do, I've said this before, they, they do come unscrewed and I have tightened them, you know, with the tool and I've also used the little higher, higher grips and one pair I've got does still come undone, but do you know what? I can kind of live with that because I can. You can feel it when it starts to come undone, and I've never had any stitches dropping off disasters. So I kind of feel like I can live with it for for such lovely needles to work with. So there we go. I'm going to finish this. I wanted to finish because this is the third pair of you know hours that I've knit, and I wanted to finish this by the first. It's actually two days before the first that we're recording today. So you never know, I might finish it. If I just work on this sock, it might get done before this podcast goes out. You never know. Dan Jones? Yes. What's on your needles? Thank you for that, because last time you completely forgot and you yeah, didn't well, ask didn't me until know. the very Thank last you for actually project. Raising that point. But that That's was very good. kind of you. Because there was no prompt from me beforehand. I don't feel like you're being sarcastic at all. There was when no telling you off. Praise me. I cast on the Uncommon Dragon Socks and it was a nightmare because the stitch count, even though it was the small, which was the same size as I've done all the other socks with, exactly the same yarn weight, it was coming out big. I mean big. Really big. So we we toed and froed and eventually came up with a plan. And instead of adding extra stitches, which is what was in the pattern, to get different, you know, some of the different sizes. We've just taken an extended version of the Uncommon Dragon stitch uh, pattern, which is in the book, Sock Architecture by Lara Neal, and we've just done that twice. We, I, have just done that. I was going to say, I've not done anything. I've done this all on my own. Now, now I have I to have, tell I've you... I've not even looked at it. Well, look. Can I look at it? In a minute. Because I know that there are mistakes. Ah. Uh. But my view on this is, this is 
as hard as double knitting was when I started. And why am I saying that? Not yet, just give me a minute. <laughs> All in good time. And it's the first time I've ever knit such a complex... What type of pattern is this? Is it... It's a lace pattern. Thank you. I'm sorry, I get confused with, with what the different ones are. It's the first time I've knit a lace pattern in socks. And when I did my first double knitting things, there were issues, there were you know little problems. And rather than be constantly going backwards and forwards, so long as, my, my view on this is, mm. so long as the stitch count stays right, and so long as you don't add stitches, just crack on with it. Because at the end of the day, look, a, a quick flash, everything looks fine. Right. Well, it does, doesn't it? Well, I can't see it, you won't let me but, see it. Well, I'm going to now in a moment, after the, everyone else has seen it. But the, the stitch pattern is, the stitch count is right. And I'm, I'm learning so much. It's, I mean, it's untrue. The, the issue with it is for me, I'm learning so much that it, I'm right on the edge. Mm. And at any moment. It's taking a lot of concentration, oh, isn't it? I am enjoying doing this. Can I look at it now? Yeah. I am really enjoying doing this. They, they haven't had a proper look yet either. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, it's def the fabric is definitely tighter than on a normal sock. Yeah. It's um, it's sort of like a chevrony lace pattern. If I hold it out, it's difficult to see because the yarn is quite variegated. Um, Which is maybe a good thing. It's disguising. I mean, you can barely see it. I'm. I've got to say, I am really. Go on, talk to me. It just looks weird. Well, you see, it doesn't look that different at the moment to what the pictures look like in the book. But I know there's mistakes in there. But what you can see, the, the way you know that the pattern seems to be working right is, look, they're in the right place. Yeah, but that's fine. You know, each, each sort of pattern repeat is working individually, but together it doesn't look very cohesive to me. I'm just going to get through this. And, and, you know, if we encounter a problem which needs drastic... Because, you know, I normally can tell when I've made such a, an error that it needs your help. And I do yeah. shout, don't I? Yeah. I do. So if I do hit a problem which needs case assistance, then I'll, I'll shout. But at this stage... I suppose if you're enjoying it, that's all that matters. Yeah, well, that is all my own work. I'm intensely proud of that, to be perfectly honest, because... Every stitch has been excruciating. Well, this is what I mean, you see. You say, this, this sock pattern has caused us a lot of issues. And I've just said to, said to you several times, you know, if it's that much of a problem and it's causing you this much angst, then don't knit it. But the thing is... No they, one's going to reprimand you for not doing it. Yeah, I know they aren't, but that's not the point. The point is, it would be a bit like me saying, right, I'm going to swim the channel and then I get to a bit which is full of jellyfish. And I think this is a very good analogy, actually, for the pain that this sock is causing me. <laughs> you get to a bit that's full of jellyfish, and the guys in the boat are saying, look, just hop in the boat, we'll go over there, because, you know, it's fine over there, we'll drop you off again, off you go. That's not the point. I'll always know that you took me out of the water and moved me so to another bit. So you would rather swim through a mass of jellyfish? Yes. Because you're so stubborn? No, because I've set myself the challenge of swimming the channel. Yeah, but sometimes you get... I've set myself you, the challenge you know, that's, of knitting that's through this That's fine, book. but sometimes things get thrown at you unexpectedly. They do, they absolutely they you, do. you have to change your plan. If I don't finish these, that's fine. But I'll knit them until the end of the year you know, at the end of the, 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 the challenge year, which is, it was actually the end of April. Or was it March? I can't remember. Right. So, you know, even if it takes me till the end of March to finish these socks, mm. I will just keep missing them. And if I don't finish them, I don't finish them. So long as I've tried, that's what's important. Mm. But I actually think that I will finish them. And the reason why I think I'll finish them is because certain things have been finished mm. that have right now is giving me more space right. for this type well, of knitting. Go for it. So, you know, in short, if you're an expert lace knitter, I'm sure these would fly off your needles. It's not a, it's not a particularly difficult lace pattern, but, it, I mean, I, I knit a few rows, didn't I, for yeah. you? Yeah, and it didn't flow very well for you, did no. it? No, no, I didn't find, I didn't, didn't really enjoy it, if I'm honest. Uh, for the first time ever, 
I thought, right, okay, I read double knitting charts, so I am going to try and read the chart. And doing it off the chart is way easier than when I was trying to do it mm. off. And the reason being, I know why, because it's such a complex row of, of mm. stitches, it's very difficult. I was losing track of where I was at before. Whereas now, because I can go right, okay, I'm six across, yeah. it's easier for me to remember. I think the issue with the pattern is that there isn't a repeat. Is no, there? it's like, there's, there's no, there's no. you know how I've said before how knitting's like music. And, and you know, if, if we're saying knitting's like music, mm -hmm. then Susie Gawley is Mozart because, you know, what she writes flows. Flows, and yeah, everything and this flows. doesn't. In summary, it's hard work, but I feel good about knitting it. Um, well, that's cool then, isn't it? And you know, what I'm particularly pleased about is at the end of each sort of sectional repeat, there's that line, isn't there, of yeah. whatever that stitch is. Mm. So for me, what comes in between, until those start lining up, that's when, but the other thing I'm finding is, the further through I knit, and every, you know, you all know this, but for me, I'm still learning these things. The further through you knit, the more you can read what you've done before. Yeah, yeah, and it may be that when you've knit some more, you will the pattern will show up more with I that think it yarn. Will. And I, I think that when I knit the second sock, I think it'll be a breeze. Because sometimes lace patterns look lovely with variegated yarns. Things like the monkey socks, um, which is a pattern by Cookie A. I've seen versions of that that have been knit with variegated yarn that look lovely. Yeah. And, you know, that's a, a lace pattern. So who knows? I mean, it might look beautiful when it's yeah, finished. they will. What else is on your needles? Da, 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 da. <sighs> I haven't knit one of these in a while and Dan makes fun of me every time I knit one. It's a Bianca hat. It's a Ricky. It's a Ricky hat. I'm knitting this as a, a Christmas gift for a family member. And... Hey, can, we, can we just say, for anyone who's wondering what this pattern is, this is the, the two pattern by J.S. Sainsbury that Kay is wearing. Oh, my cardigan. <laughs> Dan said, have you wore that on the podcast before? And I'm like, no, I don't think I have. So do you, you do realise people are going to think you've knit it? Do you know what? Do you know what? I'm going to even put a disclaimer at the top of the show notes. Otherwise, I'll be people answering are gonna, 400 messages. Yeah, I know. Messages. People are going to ask. I have not knit, knitted my cardigan it isn't hand knitted um, although please you know it looks lovely doesn't it please no one now go on to ravelry and look at and two no or, ooh, who's, who's this js sainsbury designer i got it from um sainsbury's which is like a it's a bit like walmart kind of thing you know it's a, a big supermarket chain over here and they, they sell clothes and you know they're all right the clothes they're fairly good quality and i saw this a few weeks ago i thought my goodness it was like twenty pounds, I think, which is not a lot, I don't think, for a, a cardigan. It isn't. It isn't. And it's just this lovely cabley goodness. It's pulling like the devil, but you know that's fine. Come on then, Ricky. But back to my Ricky hat, and I'm using a really pretty yarn. I've had this in stash a while. It was a gift from a lovely friend, and it's an Irish yarn, and it's made by Red Heart Knits, who is Monica O'Brien. And this colourway is called Lismore Gardens in the Spring. It's 100% Merino DK, 210 metres. And it's really beautiful colours. Look. <gasps> Look at that. It's not quite as bright as that in reality. It's pinks and purples and yellows. Really, really pretty. And it's very... I've dyed on this base before. And it's, it is a very springy base. There's a lot of plies. There's got to be for at least four plies. I think there's probably more. It's very, very springy. And this is where I'm up to. I only cast it on the other night. And I've just this has just been my bedtime knitting because it's such lovely bedtime knitting. You know, it's just knits and pearls. And this is where I'm up to. And I think it looks fabulous in this yarn. It's, yes. It's knitting up lovely, isn't it? Yes. I can't believe I knit one of those. Really nice. I cannot believe. You've knit one of these? Yes. Have I got it? Or no, no, you gave it to someone. Yeah, it was it was a gift. What colour was that? I don't remember. It was like a bluey colour. Gosh, I don't remember that. You did all. a pom pom, stuck it on the end. Crikey. It I was a no. it was a knit or it was the first knit or forfeit. Oh right. Forfeit. Gosh, and yes. there's the pattern. It's Ricky hat. It's a free pattern. The Ricky hat by Sarah Young. And actually just so, while we mentioned knit or forfeit, yes, knit or forfeit is back for its 
promised yeah. Christmas special. Yeah. Not next episode, but the episode after. And Ooh. even more exciting, this month, Kay, because of the way things have fallen, and we did manipulate this specifically, you get three episodes of the Baker Bears podcast in December. Wow, that's wow. cool, isn't it? Please continue, caller. Okay, I will. So I'm on the... I mean, it's not really a, a brim, is it? Because it's all garter stitch. Yeah. But you just, so you just change the needle size when you've done, I think it's 15 ridges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've done 11 ridges, so I've just got a few more to go. And then I get to change needle sizes up. This is three and a half mil, and you go up to four and a half millimetre. And I'm doing it the way that the pattern is written. I'm knitting around, purling around, because that's how you get garter in the round, you know, when you're working in the round. And it does produce like a seam down the back here. I quite like having that seam because although there's no front and back, whenever I'm putting something on, I do kind of like, you know, Line it up. I do, yeah, when it's a hat, I do like to have like usually where I've cast on where I know that you can't see the tail end, obviously, but I always put that to the back. So I do quite like having something that tells me which is the back. Yeah, and I'm really enjoying it. And I honestly do not have a problem. You know, when I, whenever I'm knitting one of these hats, I think, you know, why why don't people like purling? It always puzzles me. It takes longer. Um, it does take a bit longer, admittedly, you know. And I, I was thinking last night when I was knitting it, right, I'm going to purl now. What do I think about purling? It really, it doesn't, I'm quite happy to purl. I would rather knit, if I'm completely honest, but that's just because we knit much more than we purl, don't we, really? I think purling in the context of an actual pattern is acceptable. Right. Purling in the context of creating a fabric, I find boring. Oh, right, okay. So, so purling in the context of rib is boring. Purling in the context of cable is not boring. Oh, right, okay. For me. But I think sometimes as well it, it's down to your style of knitting. I think when you purl continental, I do think that's much more of a a bit of a palaver, depending right. on how you purl continental. I know there's various different ways of doing it, but it's certainly not as easy to purl continental as it is to knit, I don't think. I can knit continental, but I've never tried purling. But I know that when I've seen people you know, on podcasts and things, and they're purling and they're continental knitters, it, it just looks a bit uncomfortable. Right. So whether that's something to do with it, I, I don't know. Or whether it's just a speed thing, like you say. Yeah, it's much um, quicker just to yeah. knit, 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 knit. Um, but do you know what? If purling wasn't there, you wouldn't enjoy the knitting as much. Well, you couldn't produce the fabric. You couldn't. You, you, you couldn't. What I mean is purling makes me enjoy knit, knitting the knit right. stitch. More. Yeah. You know, you've got to have the two yeah. ends of the spectrum. But you've got and to have pearls. What's the point in to? not pearling? You know, there's no point trying to avoid it. Well, people do avoid it. I know. Like with this Ricky hat, I've seen people who they do like a short row. So when when they get to the end of the round, they'll do a short row and sort of turn the work so That's that they exactly can then I mean. carry on knitting rather than. I don't pearling. see any point in avoiding. I I, exactly. You know, at the well, end of the day. Everybody's different, I realise. Um, they are, but you know, you, you might as well... There's not that many stitches, is there, that we've got to... No, well, no, I mean, there's knits and pearls. Really, that's it. I mean, so there's no that's, point that's chopping that's off 50% of, of... And I think... But, you know, the, we'll talk about the next pattern we've chose, chosen for you, but that was one of the things. You wanted something knit in the round because you didn't want to knit flat and you didn't want to have to do all those pearl rows. I don't want to have to do, I do not want to have to do a... Uh, Pearl back row? Yes. Yeah. No thanks. So that's why we had to find something in the round. Yeah. So I don't think many. things that they like. I don't think many people would choose to do a Pearl back row. Wouldn't bo but it wouldn't bother me if, you know, that this vest that I'm going to knit for you, isn't it flat? Right. I'm going to have Pearl back rows. That's not something that entered my head. I'd rather... I, see, I think of the finished item and I think if something would be better, if it's seamed, doesn't bother me that I've got to do a lot of purling. Yeah. I would rather do that purling to get the finished object that I want. I, I think as well, for, for me, there is something about knitting in the round. It, it, it just it, Knitting like this, yeah. whether it be on circulars or yeah. whatever it may be, for me personally, right at this moment in my yeah. journey, and that's cool. I like seeing it and appear we're, below and my we're needles. We're very lucky that there's so many patterns available. You know, if it was yeah. thirty years ago, 
we'd you, be you'd, done yeah, for. Yeah, you would be really. But perhaps that's a broader question or, or, or a broader conversation in that has knitting moved on in the last 30 years where it is more engaging for oh, absolutely, the yeah. younger knitter as well as... Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the traditional way of knitting garments was always in pieces as you know in this country i realized that in sort of other countries they might have had traditions of knitting in the realm like scandinavian countries and things like that but certainly in this country my mum you know would have always knit pieced garments oh. and that was just how it was done perhaps yeah. actually it's more that the development of the craft as a whole in that and it's think, making it you know as things think, technology improves and needles improve yeah and it's it, i think it was the invention of the circular needle yeah who invented those we're gonna find Where out did that you know when when did that start we you shall know, find is, out okay is that a modern thing or is it something that's from years ago because sometimes you think it's a modern thing all and of then this will be covered in the history of knitting from, right so Ricky hat working on it got to be done fairly soon because it's a Christmas gift. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get cracking on this, and I coordinated it with my lovely bag from Sasha because <laughs> it all matches the pink and red Sasha look. These are a brand new cast on, and actually, you could say, well, it was. Whilst I had shown you previously the uncommon dragon socks, that was ripped out and left for a bit yeah. and then recast on very recently. So that was a new cast on. This is a new cast on. Mm. This is, and I used, as you can see, the long tail. Oh, no, no, I didn't, I didn't. That's look. not your tail. Where's the tail? Oh, good grief, that needs trimming, doesn't it? I know, I know. I'm these are. you not knit with that. These are the Procrastinatrix oh. socks. That's hard to say. That's very hard You have to, to stop say. and think about that before you say it. Yeah. And what's interesting about this pattern is the heel is done at the end, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So it's, it's, it's an afterthought, gusseted heel. Good luck with that one. Well, bring <laughs> it on. That's what I say. And I found in my stash of yarn some. Now look. Look, something went wrong. Oh, I've skeined up yarn. Balled Ca it up. Balled it up. Caked it up. Caked it up. I've done it many oh, times. Gosh, right. But something went wrong. Right. It just it flew and it was just. Why didn't you let me deal with that? Oh. What's happened to this? <laughs> Dan? Oh, we can't be having that. Look how tight you've wound that. Something went wrong. I mean, it what wasn't. is this? What is this all about? It wasn't tight. It wasn't tight, and perhaps that was the problem. But no, you've hand wound that bit. That's really tight. How you've hand wound that round there? I've got to deal with this, honey. <laughs> um, I'll find the centre and rewind it from the centre. This yarn is the lovely colourway that I dyed. Although you can't tell looking at that. It's a shame that that it's um the dark side and the light it's the star wars colorway that i did that i'm also knitting socks in that i'll show you shortly i mean that's hysterical isn't it it looks kind of like a little animal everything was going fine and then something popped off I, I, you can see you can see here can't you it, it slid or it looks like it slid on the it came up oh there's the end there's the end from the center pull I don't know. That poor yarn all messed up like that. It's knitting up lovely though. I've started off the rib and I'm really enjoying it so far. I mean, it, it is a really, really nice. It's you... just a plain sock, isn't it? It's plain, completely plain Not sock. Not on about the pattern. Oh. I'm on about the yarn. Oh, the yarn, right. Yeah, because I really, really, really don't enjoy plain socks. And my, my plan is with these is to get on and do them as quick as I can. Right. And actually, you know... But you see, there's no purling, so why are you not enjoying it? Because I like... No, no, I've just said to you, in the context, in the context of a pattern, I like right. purling. You could have put... A, you could have stuck a pattern in, or we can no, still stick a pattern no, in. No, 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 I can't do that. Because the point is, I'm knitting through the book. So, th the yarn is lovely to knit with. I mean, it's really, really lovely to knit with. And there's something special about it for me, because it's a Star Wars yarn. And I think it's the first time... Oh, no, I did knit with... Did I do? Yeah, Kessel Run. Kessel Run. Oh, yes. Oh, that, that was, was just gorgeous. Yeah. That was a knit natural yarn and that was just the absolute business. But 
procrastinatrix on the needles, really enjoying the yarn, and you know the pattern is going to be a real uh, learning curve. Some, what else? Something just happened with my is bag. The needles? thing flew off. That happens, unfortunately. I can sort I've, that out. Does that just go back in? And it does. Okay. So no, absolutely no worries. Cool. Because is this sock is in my Mary Poppins bag from Little Skein in the Big Wall. I did a swap with Anne. Ages ago now, actually, I sent her one of my bags that was in a Paddington fabric, and she sent me Mary Poppins. So I've got a Star Wars sock <laughs> in Mary Poppins' bag. And it warms my heart to read about Angela Lansbury, who has just finished filming in the new Mary Poppins movie. I didn't know there was going to be a new Mary Poppins movie. Yes, they they oh. they're making they're continuing with more of the P.L. Travers oh, books. Oh, I really. Oh, right. Okay. And this is a pre. It, it's a prequel. Right. So th this happens. Oh, or is it a sequel? Oh, it might be a sequel. Oh, I'm I'm lost. Look, what all I know is it probably is a sequel. Right. Emily Blunt is Mary Poppins. Right. And she does have the right look. But Angela Lansbury's in it, oh. which I think is lovely. When you Brilliant. consider bed knobs and booms, booms, boomsticks, boomsticks. <laughs> sounds like a musical instrument. Yeah, yeah, it is. a boomstick. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I just I loved reading that because you know it's it just feels right that you know when films like that are being made again yeah. to have her involved yeah, is yeah, just yeah. the business. I think she's, she's fabulous, amazing. isn't she? Her yes. because she's in her nineties now. I think. Yeah, I saw a picture of her. When she was first signed to MGM. Oh, she's beautiful. Have a guess what year it was that she was signed to MGM. Gosh. Um, You'll probably get quite close because when it comes to Angela Lansbury, Kay knows her stuff. I would say in the in the 30s, maybe. Oh, uh, it's 1945. Oh, Straight right, after okay. the war. Right, yeah. okay. And she does, I mean, but she looks, I mean, she looks like the type of lady you wouldn't mess with. You know, she's beautiful, but yeah. just talk she about... Can, she can sing really yeah, yeah. well as well. Talk about strong. You know, you look at a lady and think yeah. strong, you know. Seeing as Dan's just shown his Star Wars yarn sock, I thought I'd show you mine. So I cast this on when I first dyed this yarn, which is a few, quite a few weeks ago now. Um, and I just knit the leg. And then the other day I thought, oh, do you know what? I fancy a knit on that because it's only a couple of weeks till we, till we see the Star Wars film. Yes, I know. The Last Jedi, so I thought, well, I'll have a lovely little knit on that. And I knit all through to where I'm up to now in kind of one sitting, really. So this is where I'm up to. Who are they for? Well, it's a Bryony or a right. me size sock. So Bryony or me, I suppose Bryony's more... Well, she's not What type of heel? Well, as you can see, it's a normal slip stitch heel. It is a contrast yarn, this, although it does blend in quite well. It's a, That's a mini of... It's, I'd call this one Vader. So I, I knit a, I've knit a heel flap and gusset and I've just done a French heel because I, you know, I had this thing in my head about the other one being a bit bothersome. But the other thing that I did, just to try it, I had a memory and I've been thinking about this for a while and in a couple of patterns over the past few years that I've seen, I've seen it where it tells you to knit the heel flap so that it's a square. Generally speaking, that's not done in most sock patterns. You normally knit, say if it's a 64 stitch sock, so you've got 32 stitches for your heel, you will knit 32 rows of your heel flap. That does not produce a square, actually nowhere near a square. I, I measured it when I was knitting this the other night and when I got to the 32 rows, it was, I think it was seven centimetres across and it was only five centimetres down. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to try knitting a few more rows on the heel flap and see if that makes, see what difference it makes. Because doing the square shaped heel flap is in a book that I've got by Lucy Neatby. It's something like Cool Socks, Warm Feet or yes. some, something like that. I think it's out of print now. But she tells you to do the same thing, to knit the heel flap until it's actually a square shape, you know, measure it until it's square. And she gives you a suggested row count on what that would likely be. And for a 64 stitch sock, she said you would probably have to knit about 43 rows of heel flap. That's vastly different to 32, isn't it? 
and I was so intrigued by it I thought I'm just going to try and knit in a few more rows so instead of 32 rows I knit 36 on this heel flap so it, obviously you've got more stitches to pick up there's 18 instead of 16 and more decreases then and more decreases and you can see the decrease goes on for quite some time it's all the way down to here instead of with the dutch heel I think it stopped kind of here I don't mind knitting the decreases again right, I think well, yeah I it just means that the more, there's more there's more decreases, but then by the time you've finished them, you've not got very much foot to knit, have you? So it's a kind of trade off, isn't it? So we'll see how this fits. But I, you know, I'm I'm constantly, constantly trying to get that absolutely perfect fit sock, and all of the socks I knit fit perfectly fine. But I think just every time I need to sock, I just think, oh, I'll try something slightly different. I'll try something slightly different. Because you never know, do you? One day you might come across something and you're like, oh my gosh, that is the most perfect fit ever. But I think the yarn's lovely. I love how it's knitting up. So this colourway is the dark side and the light and with a Vader mini for the heel. There is more contrast in reality, actually, than you can see there. Um, but I love the colourway, it's really, really, really pretty. So yeah, 64 stitches, normal, just plain other than that. And I love plain socks, this is the difference, isn't it, with us, I, I guess. Really, really, really don't. I really enjoy just knitting plain, plain socks. I did establish um, that there was something to be said for your mindset when approaching your knitting on, I think it was the last uh, Lara project, because when I changed my mindset on the bootstrap, which I have finished and I'll be showing you later. I did enjoy knitting the, well, it wasn't that I enjoyed it. I was able to knit through the toe and it not annoy me. Yeah. I think it's your expectation. If I go in with an expectation of being engaged and feeling like I want to feel after I've knit, mm. then a plain sock I find really boring. Right. I really enjoy it. And this, this yarn base actually is really nice. It's uh, my 8020 Merino and Nylon. It's a high twist, it's only a two ply, but I actually prefer this to the 7525. I have dyed quite a lot on the 7525, but I've, it's, it's higher yardage, but obviously the trade off with being higher yardage is it's a slightly thinner yarn, and I prefer a slightly, this one is, you get um, 400 yards with this one, and with the, 7525 is something like 425 something like that so there is a bit of a difference so I really like this base and it's very soft and lovely so yeah and I'm gonna there's not a priority for these really I just wanted to have them on the needles around the time we go to see the film because it's just a nice a nice sort of association um, that's it in the skein it's really pretty it's greys different shades of greys there's some blue in there, although you can't really see it because of the way that I've dyed it, but it does influence the colour. And then there's like a chestnut brown and some black as well, so really lovely. It's another pair of socks. It's another brand new oh, cast on. Oh gosh, I, I, hope, about I hope you like socks, socks this week, everyone. Oh my goodness, there's so many. It's not Everyone true. loves socks, surely. Look, these are the Dyad socks and these have a contrast heel and toe and that's the first time I've ever knit a sock with a contrast heel and toe. The bootstrap I think was a good stepping stone to doing this because you have to break the yarn, rejoin it and knit down the foot. So now moving on to one of these and one does come after the other so it's as if Laura sit it out that way which I'm sure she probably did. That is the main sock yarn colour and it's gorgeous. It's lovely and I've got no recollection of dyeing that but I obviously have. And um, well I do have a recollection of asking for... You must have asked for a pinky red or something. Yeah. It's a lovely colour. So then the question was of course what do we use for the contrast? And initially we were sort of thinking about okay dyeing something up or looking at stuff in stash but then it was Kay who said why don't you use the leftovers from the other socks you've done already and that for me just tied it all up in a lovely little bow because you know this whole process for me is like you know the more I can link it all together and it have a, a conducive feel to it the better so we dug out some of the old yarns I've used and look at these two they're mm, perfect they're lovely so I think what I'm going to do with one is do the heel in pink the toe purple and the other do 
the heat the other way around. Yeah. I'm getting confused. And that one, that one didn't have a name. It was just a lilac for Bryony. And that yeah. one's Queen Mary's Rose, which I'm going to dye up, I think, Is again. It? Yeah. Because I knit a pair of socks in this. Yeah. Yes. I knit you the pair that you have, that you really yes. like in yes. this. Yes. You wanted Queen Mary's Rose. To yes, yes, myself. yes. Yeah. Now I remember. So, dyed socks on the needles and after having... A momentary pause in my, you know, sock mission. I'm now back, as you can see, mm. with effectively three brand new cast-ons and a decent amount of progress with those with those cast-ons. Away we go. What else Brilliant. is on your needles? Well, the last thing for me this time oh, is I've me. dug out a very Ooh. long-standing project that I haven't worked on in ages. And in fact, I think last time we recorded, I said that I wasn't sure that I really wanted to knit on it very much anymore. And then all of a sudden I had an urge last night to knit, to knit it, so I dug it out. And it's my blanket, my... Um, it, was, it started out as a Disney blanket, didn't it? And now it's just favourite movies blanket. And it's a mitered square. I'll show you... Guess what? Kay forgot how to do them. I took... I can't remember, you know, the last time I knit a mitered square, I can't even think how long ago it is. It's a few months. And bearing in mind how many of these squares I've, I've knit, I obviously just thought, I don't need to write it down. Well, I, was, I sat last night and I went, oh, I can't remember how many I cast on. I don't, how did I do the decrease? I was like this, I thought, you ridiculous woman, you've knit 5,000. You ridiculous woman. Of these, and I know I've written down general instructions for this blanket somewhere, and I had a bit of a search in my office, couldn't find it. So I thought, I looked on my project page, and actually I'd written down on my Ravelry project page the stitch count. I thought, right, okay, I can work this out. And to be honest, I just sat down, I cast on a square, and it was like my hands knew what to do. And I just remembered. And then I wrote it down, <laughs> so I didn't forget. So we had a lovely discussion while we were having tea last night on the next block I wanted to do. I decided actually, and Brian is like, oh yes, do that one, mummy, because it's one of her favourites as well. I'm doing Death on the Nile as my next block because we all love that film, I think, don't we? We absolutely all love that yeah. film. And that actually reminds me of the review which you wrote for Murder on the Orient Express, which is in our seasonal yeah, special I knitability, did, which did. came out I think, just a week ago. Yeah, I think I, I was in this kind of Agatha Christie sort of Poirot frame of mind, and that just made me think of it. Because I am also going to be doing a little yarn series for the patrons starting next year Ooh. of Agatha Christie based colourways which they all, you know, they all seem very excited about, and I'm excited to do as well. So I started a new block last night, and I'll show you where I'm up to with this, just as a little recap. I've done eight so far, so it's two by four. Sounds like a piece of wood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a two by four. Oh, it looks lovely. Isn't wood four by two, or is it two by four? Oh. I think you would say two by four, wouldn't oh, you? Oh, no. I don't know, I'm not very sure good with stuff like yeah. this. So we've got, um, what films have we got? Toy Story, Finding Nemo, Frozen, The Force Awakens, Harry Potter, Bedknobs and Broomsticks, The Wizard of Oz and Muppets Christmas Carol is what's in here already. And I'm bordering it this time with this beautiful pink. I love the pink. This was inspired by lovely Diane, who's one of knit socks, because she bordered one of her mitered square blankets. She did an I-cord border with, I think, this exact pink. And it's Cascade Heritage in strawberry cream. It's really just beautiful. It's just a lovely, pale, gorgeous pink. So that's where I'm up to. So I started a new block last night. And you've actually knit some? I've done one square. Wow. So we planned out... Because genuinely it was touch and go as to, you know, how this was going to pan out. When I left the room... I, yeah, I just thought, can I do, can I remember how to do this? And sometimes... So I haven't seen this. Ooh, sometimes, I, sometimes I'll be like, oh, I can't be bothered, I'll put it away, I don't want to do that. But no, I did want, I do, I do want to knit, I do want to knit on it. So I knit one little square last night and I was going to 
start another one this morning and then I thought I won't because that'll make it awkward to show because I wouldn't have had time to finish it. So we planned out, we got a little grid last night while we were having tea, it was lovely, and we planned out all the colours. Bryony was like, oh, do that one, do that one, do that one. So I've started off with the pyramids because obviously you've got to have a square that's the pyramids because that's where the film really, it, it's not where it starts so, as such in the film, but, you know, one of the key scenes is two of the characters riding through on horses past the pyramids, climbing up there. You wouldn't be able to climb up the pyramids now, would you? Although some fella um, did, and then probably got really? arrested when he got down the bottom. Gosh. He so, filmed the whole thing, you can see it online. Here's the pyramids. Oh, and it that kind of looks like a pyramid, I think, doesn't it? If you hold it, look, if you hold it like that, it does look like a pyramid in the sand. I was really pleased with that one. So this bit is Cascade Heritage in Butter. I really love that colour. And then the bottom bit is a yellow that I dyed. It was um, Chats with Gold. So that's my first square. And I totally remembered. Do you remember pyramids? Pyramids? Oh, what are you made me one one. What's a pyramid? It was a, it, it was a chocolate thing. As I recall, you bought it and it was just, it was one piece, a bit like a Cadbury's cream egg, right? right. And it was in the shape of a pyramid. Right. It was, I think it might have been dark chocolate, but it didn't taste like dark chocolate. I think it was like towards the darker chocolate. Right. And in the middle, there was a mint cream. Oh. A really How big was one. it? Like a cream egg? It was like a cream egg. I don't remember those It was more. a good size. And I remember on the way home from school quite regularly, people would go in and buy them from the, the, the sweet shop and then eat, eat them on the bus. And I really Who want made one. Them? It, it might be someone along the line at Bendix. Um, it was someone reasonable. Well, they stopped doing those those chocolate mints we love. Yeah, I know. Mingles. Yeah, Mingles. Mingles oh. were fantastic. And then we, we went to look for them at Christmas, yeah. maybe last Christmas, yeah. and online there it was, it said... Don't make them anymore. Deceased. They were the best chocolate mints. Because yeah. you always have to have, although I don't eat chocolate anymore, but, oh. you know, oh, really, you have to have a box of chocolate mints, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, lovely. So there's my first square, and the next one I'm going to do is Colonel Race. If you know the film, you'll know Colonel Race, and that's the David Niven version of Colonel Race. And he wears a lot of kind of navy blue jackets and cream-coloured trousers and white shirts. So I found this opal, which is lovely blues and pale greys. And then I'm also going to put some of this silvery grey in. That seems very Colonel Race to me. And then the other blocks we've got, like the Nile, is one, um, the boat, the colours of the boat. Bryony wanted a, a, a square that was like blood. <laughs> That's really funny. And there's obviously a Poirot square, which will be in all kind of, I pulled some out, it's like kind of creams and browns. Oh, that totally oh. nearly went in the coffee. Whoops. It's my stitching time blanket. If you look on Ravelry, I've done, I've knit a blanket previously using this method and it's called a stitching time. So there we go, that's my lovely movie blanket. And I knit it on 2.75 millimeter needles. Have you finished? Yes. Thank goodness. Oh look, look it's Colonel Mustard. Speaking of Colonel Race. Oh yeah. Colonel Mustard is together. And you can follow every stage of the journey of me making this in the uh, toy knitting tutorials which we're currently publishing, although they're, they're now paused until the Christmas festivities are over because of course we're on the advent calendar right the way through the Christmas period. Yeah. And then Kay has her special shows between Christmas and New Year with your top five yarns and your house socks wear. Um, so they'll be back um, at the beginning of 2018, but there he is. Oh, he is he's together. lovely, isn't he? And, and he, he's really sweet. He really is. He now, needs some clothes. The poor. He does. Guy. He does. He doesn't. I was just picking you that up. Steal a jumper. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. Oh. It's fine. I, I need to talk to you about this, Kay, because right. I need to get the cast on right for coming back for you know for his head hole. I've cast off. Yeah. But now I need to cast back on for, yeah. for the head hole and I want to make sure I do that right. Yeah. No I know problem. what the cast on's supposed to be and maybe it'll be easy once I get there, but right now I'm yeah. I'm just slightly concerned I'm oh, gonna mess it up. Look. But Let's there see. is his jumper. Let's see. <gasps> look, oh it's so sweet. It's like a sort of pale duck egg. The colour. And his head goes through there. We need to get it finished. Yeah, I know, I know. I think, are we going to give it to Brownie for Christmas? Are you can gonna, do, Are can you going to give it to Yeah, Christmas? okay. I did make some mistakes. I knit one arm too long and a leg is not quite right. And But do you know what? Neither are we. 
Oh, no, we're not no, perfect. There's, certainly there's not. Little things wrong here and there. So it just gives him character. Absolutely gives him character. And when he's got his his jumper and his shorts, it'll be perfect. Oh, he's not having shorts. Oh, isn't he? No. I oh. think we decided you were just going to knit the jumper. Okay. There he is, Colonel Mustard. Done. So he can sit up there on his lovely chair. In his nakedness. And what we can do is get Christmassy because it is the first of December. So it's time to begin a journey which will start today and will flow right the way through until Christmas Eve. It is the Baker Bears Advent Calendar 2017 and for the first time ever we're sharing the first window with everybody but then from today onwards it will be in full for Silver Plus podcast patrons. So enough talk and let's get on with Christmas. Advent Calendar 2017. This year we are on a mission and that mission is a tricky one. We're in search of the perfect family Christmas. For us to achieve that we're going to need the perfect Christmas church, the perfect Christmas tree, the perfect Christmas decorations, the perfect Christmas turkey or maybe it's chicken and so much more. So join us here at Christmas HQ. There's 24 special little videos. Starting today, the 1st of December, and running right the way through to the 24th of December. We're going to take you all over our county, searching for all the things we need to create the, the perfect, perfect family, family Christmas. Christmas. Will we succeed? We've got no idea, but we know one thing, it's going to be fun. So bring the mistletoe and your best Christmas jumpers. And let's get cracking. Welcome to our Perfect Family Christmas HQ. Now this is Hello Turf, Kay. Is it? This is the first time we have been sat here since we used to podcast from here. In uh, fact, we, the last we, time... We did come back in here, I think. We did. The last did time you? we were sat here was probably episode 24. Wow. Unbelievable. Was it really? Yes. So we are back on Hallowed Turf because this challenge is a big one. It's a big one. Because we have to plan our whole Christmas. Yes. So this is the place, this is the HQ where we will be doing all the planning. This is what Delia does. Yes, yes. Prior to us going out into the world and taking you with us to execute said plan. Mm -hmm. But currently the sheet of paper is blank. Now we need to fill this sheet of paper with the outline of what we're doing. Yeah. So I think we need some Christmas priorities. Okay. So what is Christmas priority number one? I don't know. You don't know? Well, well what is, genuinely what is, we're planning Christmas, we're yes. starting from scratch, so Everything is up in the air. The We're tree. looking at so tree, so Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Okay, so tree. Yeah. Okay. Decorations. Now, decorations. Okay. See, she's on a roll now. I didn't know. I thought you. Okay. I thought there was something specific no. you wanted me to say. No, of course not. This is An unscripted, advent, baby. Advent calendar. Advent calendar. Okay. So we've got advent calendar, but there's more, isn't there? There's more. What about food? Oh well, yeah. What are we eating? Yeah, that's true, but food is kind of low down on my okay. priorities well, these days. How interesting. It is low down. A few years, well, it's funny because a few years ago, food would have been right at the top. But no longer. No, no. because we just eat differently, don't we? And I'm not drawn and to all the heavy Christmas yeah. food. Within the food category, 
I suppose number one priority is are we eating chicken or turkey? Mm, yeah. yeah, it's so, not a big decision, I don't think. So, no. but everything is up in the air this year. We're starting afresh. Right, okay. So we will look at everything okay. with fresh eyes right. and make an informed decision. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, oh, do you like our Christmas outfits? Oh, yes. Here's your pig. Yes, and this is never been worn before. I've never worn it. Dan bought me this, probably. <gasps> That's right. Three years Unbelievable. ago. Unbelievable. It's a few. It's a few Christmases ago, and I've literally never worn it. And I think the reason I didn't even try it on is because it it was a size of jumper that I think I was bigger than at right. the time, right. and I was just scared of putting it on because right. I just thought I'd look horrendous in it. So I've literally never even put it on till this morning. I took the tag off. I just nice. thought, Do you know what, I'm going to put it on. And she it, you look, it's alright. She I looks beautiful. Well, I think it's okay. It's so I exciting. Go that far, For the 1st of December. It it's Percy Pig from Marks and Spencers. If you're in this country, you'll know about Marks and Spencers. And they do these sweets, which are called Percy Pigs. Here he is in his Christmas outfit. So, food, turkey, but yeah. also, I mean, there are obvious ones like sausage rolls. Yeah, I'll they... be making sausage rolls. Excellent, excellent. I don't know whether I'll be eating any, but I'll be making them. And you'll join us for me eating some later on the advent calendar. Yeah. Um, but... Mince pies. Mince pies. They, they are a given, aren't they? It's Christmas, you've got to have mince pies. And I will pies. have a mince pie. I'll definitely have Absolute, a mince pie. Absolutely. Christmas pudding. Christmas pudding. You see, so, that's... I'm not going to make it. I have made Christmas pudding before. Um, but I haven't, I haven't made it this year and there's not enough time for it to mature really now. Um, so we need to find one. So we need to find one and we'll be doing little taste tests yes, it, won't we? Yes, yes, Because absolutely. you can buy, usually, you can buy these little miniature ones, miniature versions, yeah. can't you, yeah. of, of like a bigger pudding. So we're going to try a few miniature ones. Let's go and we'll score them out of ten and then we'll know which is the best and we'll know which one we're having. Yeah. But here is a tricky subject, pickle. Pickle. Now, no. we need to be making the Christmas pickle. Yeah, again, I should normally I will have made that by now. I, I always make um, Delia's Christmas chutney and I haven't made it yet this year, but we checked the recipe and I've still got time. One is fine, but it's Christmas and you love cold meats and chutneys. I do. So we need to find yeah, so the we, perfect accompaniment yeah, yeah. to your Christmas yeah. chutney. Yes, and we have tried lots of chutneys before and we know certain... Chutneys? Ch I can't speak. We know certain shops that do really nice chutneys. So we're going to go. So we're going to take you there. Yeah, we're going to get yeah. the chutney and then we'll taste test that too. Yeah. But it's December the 1st. Yeah. What is priority number one today? I think it is, isn't it? Right. We need an advent calendar, and it will be our advent calendar for the whole season yeah. uh, to get this party started. So I think we should go get one. Yes! How Christmassy was that? Goodness me! I mean... Did you like the bells? Yeah, that, now they were just at the end. Oh. It's tomorrow that we unveil oh, right, okay. the bells 
with some of my very own keyboard play. Yes. Yes. I had to go in search of a very particular sound because there are, right the way through this year's advent calendar, we're, we're paying homage to, I think we should also pay homage to some other Christmas films too, because mm. I'm just thinking there's some other little things oh, that, right. that we can do along the way. But yes, there is a certain amount of homage being paid to definitely our, our, our favourite Christmas movie, and we're going to add some more, because uh, there's quite a bit more filming yet to do, but really hope you enjoyed that. We had the best time, actually. We did. We have officially kicked off Christmas, and it does start an interesting conversation. As someone mentioned this on the Patreon podcast live, which we did on Sunday, and that was, at what point... Mm. In, in, in America, they were saying that Thanksgiving is the time when the green light is, is given to start getting ready for Christmas. Yeah. When is that point here? And I think we have a problem with it. We don't have a trigger. There should be like. a trigger. Yeah, we don't have anything. There should be a trigger, don't you think? It's different for everybody. Yeah, there should be, but I don't know what that would be. No, because, you know, that then brings us to the, the, the conversation of at what point do we put up our Christmas decorations? Because we were thinking we were going to do it this weekend. Yeah. And then actually we've come to the conclusion that we're going to do it next weekend. I think weekend. we're going to do it next weekend because it's only the first day... So it would mean doing it tomorrow, and that's the second. And I don't know, that just feels maybe a little bit too early. It depends on how it falls, doesn't it? Each year's different. I think last year, it was sort of like the fourth or fifth or something like that, that it fell. So that feels right. It's so tricky, isn't it? Because what you don't want to do, I'm now definitely more of the opinion of, I don't want any regrets. You know, I would hate to think at the end of Christmas that you think, oh, I really wish we'd put it up. You know, a week earlier because I don't think we will think that though. I'd love to know what is the trigger. If you're not in America, what is the trigger for you? Mm. What's the trigger for? Okay, Christmas starts now, and I know you know we had a bit of a chat with this on the Patreon podcast. And people were you know some people were saying it's quite late, some were saying it's mm. quite early. But what's what was your trigger? Mm. And you know, b before you know it, I think that's the 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 key point always is before you know it, it's over. Mm. So you want to make sure that you enjoy all of it, but mm. also you don't want to start too early. No, not too early. But because I think the shops always start ridiculously early, don't they? You see, kind of yeah. Christmas wrapping paper, and that then puts right, you off right after Halloween, which you're like, oh my gosh, it's still October. You know, it's a bit early. I think it's time that we find out because this is mammoth. Oh, it's mammoth. Kay Jones. What's off your needles? We've got loads. We really do have loads. We've been so productive, yes. I think, haven't we? And I've been very focused these past couple of weeks on working through some projects and getting them finished. And I'm really pleased. A tiny bit disappointed I didn't get Bryony's Christmas socks finished as well. But I might still do that, you know, in the next couple of days. But I have finished... Hold on. What? Can't we start with... Oh, you want me to start with Yes, with I him? think I think we need to remove Colonel Mustard because he's not complete from the throne. All right. Ready for someone else to take the throne in a moment. Ah, oh, okay. And who is it? So you might have seen the sign. You might have seen. You've been staring at it for the past hour, haven't you? Mr Fox and Many Socks. Now, we've, we're have we part way through the Many Socks. We still have some to, co some to come. But Mr Sock... Mr Socks. Mr Fox is here. Now this is a new toy, everybody. Wow. I don't quite know what to say about him. It's difficult because I'm not very good at self-promotion. Well, it's not, it's not self-promotion. So often, Kay's been asked. You know, the, the first thing that Kay ever did was Mr. Baker about. Yeah. And how, sort of how profound and how appropriate that the, the day I show you my first, you know, put together bakery bear is the day when the family is going to grow. And people yeah. have asked that so often. Yeah, when is the family I get, going to grow? Yeah, I get asked it all the time. You know, are you going to be doing another toy pattern? But the most um, important thing for you is, in your design process, you've always said, is you, you, you never force anything. No. And you don't when design I, for when, the sake of design. No, whenever I've tried to deliberately kind of sit down and design a new toy or whatever, I've tried a couple of times and it just hasn't gone right. But then with this... It just popped into my head, as these things always do, very quickly. I, I quickly sketched out what I wanted, started knitting, and really it was knit within a few days. And that that is how it happens with me. So I know that if I don't force it, it will just naturally happen when I'm ready to do, you know, that next thing. 
So, shall I show you? Can, oh, you kind of got a little sneak peek. Are you ready? Here he is. Oh, hello. This is Mr. Fitzwilliam Fox. He's got a very grand name, hasn't he? You people who are fans of Pride and Prejudice will realise why I've chosen that name. It's Mr. Fitzwilliam Fox. And the other reason is because he's a gamekeeper on a country estate. In Derbyshire. In Derbyshire. Yes. Yeah, of course he is. So he's dressed up in his lovely coat. He's got real pockets that work. Bryony thought these were amazing. Just need a little pipe. But, I know, he needs something in his pocket. Let's move his scarf out of the way. Yeah, it's so the real pockets that work. And socks. Socks, and look, there's his little tail. There's his tail. Looky, looky. Oh, a little fox tail. So I'll take his scarf, and a scarf. The scarf was kind of a little additional extra that um, suddenly, I think you said, oh, I think he needs a scarf. Well, if he's walking through the woods, yes. doing his gamekeeping duties, he needs to oh, keep warm. there he is. Oh, he's so cute. So the socks come off, then it's separately, and, you know, pop it onto his little foot. And I just had so fun. So, so much fun knitting his little socks. I do have, well, they might do. It's a very tiny baby. I do have another pair here. This was the first one that I knit. Look. Oh, adorable. These are in some opal. These came out a tiny bit too big, so I reduced my needle size and just knit plain. Because I wanted just plain, kind of plain socks. When I put these on him, they kind of stood out a bit. And I think because he's, you know, he's a gamekeeper. When he straps very, his boots on. Very I mean... formal, aren't they? They're very, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But these, I mean, this is, oh, they're so adorable. They take about 10, 12 grams of sock yarn, so perfect for, you know, the little opal. I used one of the opal mini balls from two years ago, advent calendar for these. Absolutely adorable. And I had tried to knit these socks again. I deliberately tried to knit bakery bear socks as it was at the time, a couple of years ago, and just couldn't get the pattern right. And then I realized what the problem was when I started knitting this, and I'd corrected that problem, and they fit absolutely perfectly. So it is a traditional sock, but with a few little differences. And it's got this really cute little star toe, which is adorable. Don't take very long to knit at all. So Mr. Fox is knit in worsted weight. I used some beautiful yarn. I'll show you the tag. I used this for Mr. Fox. It's the De, De Ray Rum Natura. I'm so sorry, it's a French yarn. Everybody's cringing at my pronunciations, but it's the Gilead, which is the worsted weight. And I used Caramel and Goland. It's a beautiful yarn, it's non-superwash. I really like non-superwash yarn for toys because it's very sturdy, hard wearing, you know, and it's just brilliant because he's not going to go in the washer, obviously, so it doesn't matter that it's non-superwash. And then his jacket, his coat, is knit using Jameson and Smith two-ply jumper weight, so that's like a four-ply stroke fingering. And then his socks are drops fable, so any sock weight yarn will work for his socks. And the scarf actually is, it's two strands of fingering weight held double and this is a, a mini from Hedro Yarns. And it's beautiful. I just thought the colours went so well with his sort of autumn attire. So when's the um, pattern out, okay? It's in test knitting right now. I've got two lovely patrons who are test knitting him for me. So as soon as he's been test knit, the, the pattern will be out. So. Keep your eyes peeled. I'll, I will announce it. If it's before the next podcast or if it's in between podcasts or whatever, I will put a, a notice on Instagram, obviously, that the pattern is out. But this is Mr. Fitzwilliam Fox, and I think he's just so cute. Yay. So the oh. family has finally grown. He's so adorable. Yes. I really love him, and Bryony thinks he's the cutest thing I've ever knit. And she's like, can I have him yet? Can I have him yet? And I'm like, no, no. I've got to do the photos, and I've done some of the photos now, but we still want to get some others, don't we? So we need I've to said, take him on an outdoor photo shoot do. in the I woods. Think, I think he needs some woodsy shots, because he's a very outdoorsy fox. He is. But yeah, I love him, and he's he was really quick to make, really, you know, really. And I loved that you can use, you, you know, the, the socks only took... 10, 12 grams, so you can use scraps for that. The little scarf only took about 
12-ish grams. So, you, you know, you can use your minis and things like that and knit him extra pairs of socks for Christmas. And I did start knitting him a Christmas pair, look. And I did contrast cuffs, heels and toes. Yeah. How cute is that? But this one is, it was slightly too big, so I didn't do the other one. Love him, Mr. Fox. Talking of socks, I'm loving those ones. Oh, those? I'll put a oh, scarf right. back okay, on. you put a scarf. You, they you make won't. me think of the Goldbergs. Yes. These are my 80s inspired socks. Inspired by a pair of amazing socks that Erica Goldberg was wearing in yes. the TV show, The Goldbergs, which we really enjoy watching. Yeah, yeah. And it, hers were like up to the knee, but these are not up to the knee. But actually, they're much longer than any socks I've ever knit before. Because you had to get all those amazing colours in. all the colours in, but look, my... Rainbow tastic. They don't they look 80s? I think they look very 80s. With the white, the bright white, and then the rainbow. So I'll just hold one up so I can show you properly. But somebody on Instagram did put, oh, that's a great use for self-striping yarns. And I'm like, you know, it's not self-striping. I would love a self-striping yarn like that. <laughs> but it's individual scraps of different colours that I, you know, I've cut. And obviously that's the, the jog. Never bothers me, it's fine, isn't it? You can wear that on the inside of your leg. So yeah, they came out quite long because I wanted to get all the colours and I wanted to do like eight rows of each. But that's fine. The, you know, the, if they sort of slouch down a bit, I think that makes them look even more eighties. It's like a leg, leg warmer. warmer. A leg yeah, warmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is cool. really cute. And then, so this is just all scraps of fingering weight yarn. Some of them are of ones I've dyed. And then the white is just Regia four ply sock yarn in white. This one I did do a square turn on this one so we'll see how they fit. I haven't tried them on yet. I'm kind of saving them because these were the pair that I've knit for myself that are my sort of Christmas Eve socks. So I deliberately haven't tried them on yet. I want to sort of leave them all fresh and lovely until Christmas Eve so they're all done. Yay! Cool! Wonder of wonder. Miracle of Miracles. Oh. It is a song from Fiddler on the Roof. Oh. It suddenly reminded me. Well, if you just think, everybody, what Dan hasn't shown in his works in progress. Well, look at this. Oh, I don't want to. There we go. Da, da, look, da. look, it's finished. It's finished and all cast off. And the best bit of all is... You can, you can undo it and hold it up. It totally fits me. <laughs> it probably would, actually. Well, it would because the other one fit yeah, me. Yeah, it probably would. It's just beautiful. And the only reason I'm not wearing it is because he only finished it yesterday afternoon and we didn't have time to wash and block it and get it dry. Because it'll take ages to dry, won't yeah, it? Yeah, it'll take a while Especially to this dry. Time of year. This time of year, there's no heat at all. So we thought, we'll just show it's it. Just... And then I'll be wearing it on the next episode. I think that, you know, what it's done is it's successfully shown me that I'm a garment knitter because the feeling of seeing Kay when she put it on oh, was God. unlike Yeah, I anything. tried it on. I tried it on straight away the second it was off the needles and it fits lovely. The thing which... There we go. It really shocked me was <laughs> how it made me feel. It, well, I didn't feel... Pride comes before a fall, doesn't it? That, that's not what I felt um, at all. It was... A different kind of feeling back. and I think the feeling you know comes down to keeping some knitting something for someone or creating something I wonder if people who make clothes feel this as well we all have to wear clothes don't we they're a rather important thing in our lives and I think when you can create something that is like that that's so important it's going to keep somebody warm and it's going to last them a long time it feels different to a hat mm. or socks or anything that I've knit before. This feels more, I don't know, it just felt right. So th the question then is, because I think I've spoken to you before about how I get antsy if my bags aren't full of the correct type of projects. So I've got sock bags, I've got double knitting bags, and now I've got a garment bag. So that garment bag needs a garment in it. After much looking and searching. A lot of looking. This is what I shall knit next, and I'll cast it on soon, actually. Yeah, shall I hold it a bit closer? I'll it's... cast it on before the end of the year. Isn't it lovely? And it really fits the, the, the w w what I want to do next, mm. and, you know, m more cables, definitely, 
and in the round. Yes, in the round, bottom up, which is not which done different. before. So but it's in the round, new. and the, this same pattern is on the back as well because he wanted something on the back. So it's Samantha, as you can see, by Amy Miller, and it's just lovely. It's a, it's an Aran weight, and I've got some Malabrigo worsted. Yeah. That we think will work. Yeah, I really like how the pattern is written. You know, I learned a lot with with the Thea Carmen pattern and it, it being slightly confusing and difficult to work out. This, I've had a, a good little look already. Mm. And I feel much easier about how this is written. So I'll get that cast on and that will, I mean, I would have finished this quicker had I not been off the grid effectively with regards to knitting for about a month with my op earlier on in the year. So hopefully I should get that one finished a little bit quicker. Now what I did was, <laughs> you know, Kay said she didn't want any, any shaping, but I put some shaping in. <laughs> didn't realize I was putting shaping in. I was weaving in ends for him. I just gave you a hand to weave in the ends. And I thought, this, these two ends look weird when I was looking at them. And I looked on the front of the work. And somehow, and he's done this in two spots, when he started a new ball of yarn, he's created an, an, an extra stitch. I don't know how on earth he's done it, but I'll try and hold it up so that you can see. You'll see the sort of little area. Can you see it just there, look? The little blippy area. And there's an extra stitch underneath it. I've tried to disguise it as much as I can, but, you know, it is what it is, and there's another one on the back, but I think... But they're on separate sides, yeah. because I wanted to add just a tiny bit of shaping, because <laughs> she's a lady at the end of the day. I don't know what she's going on. It's about, fine, so. you know, I mean, it, you'll not notice it when it's on. No, and it, it really does look great on, which is what... It fits really nice. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not been blocked yet, so I'm not going to block it very... I hate using this word very aggressively. I'll hold it for you. you can, um, can I just say, when I hear people say, oh, I've blocked the devil out of that shawl, or I've really aggressively blocked it, my heart just sinks. I just cringe, honestly, because I think what you're doing when you do that is you're stretching the yarn, I think, personally. Just my opinion, everybody. But you're stretching the yarn beyond where it should be. You know, it's a natural fibre, so it will have some stretch, especially when it's superwash. But I, you know, like for that, for the garment, it is a superwash yarn, but I will just be very, really gentle with it. I'll soak it, I'll then, you know, I'll, I'll do it in the bath probably, I'll squeeze out as much as water as I can, I'll then put it in some fluffy towels and just get out as much water as possible, and then I'll lay it out on another towel and I won't pin it or anything like that. All I do is I just smooth out any areas that need smoothing and then leave it. And I, I won't, I do, you know, and I do that, to be honest, I do that with everything. I do that with shawls. I do pin like the top edges of shawls just so that they're straight, but I do not pull things out aggressively. If it's lace, I'll just smooth it out with my hands and open up the lace, but I won't pull it beyond where I think it needs to be. What else? Is off your needles. Oh, they don't fit on there. <laughs> I've finished Dan's socks. He's put them onto this sock blocker and they totally look ridiculous on it. I've finished Dan's opal socks. Do you know the splodgy, splodgy opal? There they are. He's put them on this silly blocker. So there's two there. You can see the blocker is there, look. <laughs> How ridiculous is that? And I really enjoyed knitting these. It was a, a yarn that was gifted to me from Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. You know who you are. You know, I really enjoyed knitting them. But this is my thing with the... I've done a square heel, and this bit here for Dan, it doesn't look very broad. I know what his foot's like, and I'm just worried about that area. So I'm going to see how they fit. And I, I, I think I know now that I won't do a square heel turn for Dan anymore, because... I don't think there's enough stitches around there. No. Be okay for this pair, but I won't do that again, I don't think. So this is Opal Memory. It's a discontinued range. And then the heels and toes are opal as well. And it's in the middle grey, silver grey, metal grey. Not sure the translation. And they're all done. And they weighed about 85 grams altogether. So I have got a nice little chunk of the opal left which is what I wanted to put into my cushion covers that I'm making. So they're all done and ready for Christmas Eve. Lovely and I've also 
been getting I brought my other blockers I'm getting my it. finger out and getting the uh, the bootstrap socks done and you know I'm pleased actually because I, I did sort of have a momentary pause didn't I yeah. and I, I wasn't sure exactly when I'd get these finished but the, the focus I think it was the uncommon dragon and not having a plan around the uncommon dragon that was just it was bothering me and, and us but as soon as we got the plan these really did fly off the needles they're lovely there they are all done so bootstrap socks with the bow brig and heel done and dusted and learnt a tremendous amount knitting these so yeah really enjoyed that and you have one more pair too but this is a pair of socks that i finished recently and I did a tutorial series for our lovely patrons and it's a sock I designed myself so they got a tutorial series on how to knit it which obviously had the pattern in there as well as we went along and it I called them the snowfall socks so here they are it's in chunky weight yarn and this actually is stylecraft special chunky in parchment the colour super quick like lightning quick just brilliant and do you know what the yarn was very nice to knit i've never used i've never used this particular yarn before i've got a big bag of it upstairs that i was going to make a blanket with and never got around to it and i thought do you know what i'm going to do something with this yarn and you can get a pair out of a hundred gram ball with about i had about 10 grams ish left and this is like a size a uk size six i got what are you going to do so, with those? These are going to be a gift for someone for Christmas. Yes, excellent. Because, because they can be. Yeah, because they're acrylic. Genius. Can be thrown in the washer without a bother. Have you spoken about that already? Or is that... I mentioned it yesterday. Oh, okay. And I just put in this little stitch pattern that I thought looked like little snowflakes drifting down. It does. And then, you know, they're lovely. And loads of our patrons have been knitting these up, which has been brilliant. You know, so, because sometimes I think, you know, what do you do with, if you've got, like me, if you've got like a stash of acrylic yarn that you don't really knit with anymore, but you want to do something with it, I think this is brilliant. And if you've got a, it works as well if you've got a DK and you double it, it brings you about a chunky. There we go. You done? Yes. Because it's time for us to get ourselves Gosh. right back down that world food aisle. Oh yes, I missed it last episode. When we were finishing off our... I am a bit peckish, actually. I'm very peckish. I think that's the reason why I'm so thinking I missed it so much. I've got high hopes that this is going to be nice. Absolutely. Neil, we have two things from Jamaica. <gasps> Jamaica! Oh, yes. Can you believe it? Yes. Neil, I've never seen this before. Look I've, at this. I've never seen it. Who's seen this before? Anyone got any experience of this? So this is fun. Mighty Malt Premium classic energy malt drink and it's made by grace it must so be a Jamaican I have a feeling recipe yes I have a feeling that this is going to look like Guinness oh really it's non-alcoholic yes it's yes I was correct it does look like Guinness oh my goodness it's like we're having a pint in the look pub. at that wow so it's because it's malt of course I'll smell it well smell it in there you'll get more of a whiff it smells like Horlicks oh you're joking no I love Horlicks you can go in first it smells like Horlicks Absolutely could be Oh hard. my goodness, it's a cold Horlicks drink. What does it taste like? Like Horlicks. You're jesting. No. Oh no. I love Horlicks. Okay, so this is a carbonated cold version of Horlicks. Yeah, it's very strange having it cold. It smells like Horlicks. <laughs> no. That's weird. It is, it's not unpleasant. That. Is like someone it's has made strange. a Horlicks, chilled it, mm. and fizzed it up in a soda stream. It is. That's just what it's like. It's not unpleasant. You're pulling a face, you're not keen. I just feel like someone has said, oh, Dan, I've, I've got some homebrew. Right. Try this. Oh, really? It's like someone hasn't, hasn't See, done I... the yeast bit right in the oh. homebrewing process. You see, I'm very fond of Horlicks. And the if you're not a fan of If you're not a fan of malty sort of flavoured things, I don't know that you would like it because it is very malty. But I think it's quite pleasant. I'm getting a big time beer after So am I. I'm flavor. getting a beery thing as well. Uh, but that's obviously the malt, isn't it? Because they use malt in brewing. It's a specific type of beer. It's, it's a mild. 
anyone's had a pint of mild, I'm getting a real mild... It's barley malt. Yeah, yeah. effect from that. Hops, there's hops in there as well. Oh, there's some vitamins in there. I've got to say, Kay, mm. if I'm brutally honest, it is sort of growing on me. Yeah, I mean... I... Pour the rest in. <laughs> Now, it, now he's realised it kind of tastes like beer. No, 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 no. I mean, as you all know, we stopped drinking a long time ago and not interested in that at all. What I'm liking about this... It's, it is odd. You can see why it's... like You it. can see why it's called an energy drink. Mmm. I feel... It's the sugar. I feel a bit lifted. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, the energy part of it. But then it has got quite a lot of vitamins in. I've just said it. I mean, I've noticed it's got loads of vitamins. The look of it, it's very similar to the root beer. It is. It's nothing and like actually, the root beer. And actually, when you, when you look at the product, mm. it perhaps fits in in Jamaica yeah, to yeah. a similar bracket that yeah. root beer maybe fits in. Well, let me tell you, this is really nice. That I would drink. I would drink a whole can of that. I wouldn't go near root beer again. That brand of root beer again. It is a bit... It is odd because, you know, there is, is that whole... peculiar. It's made me feel a bit weird actually now. Well, don't drink any more. I don't think... We, we've just established that we're not completely certain it agrees with me. So I think I might... I don't think I should have any more I of that. I'm not having any more. I think... So we've got to give this a score. Out of what we've scored? Ten. At? Five. Yeah. It, it started low, it, it raced up, and then oh, it, it's it's, it suddenly dropped down again. It, it's odd. It's odd. I think the sugar gave us both a lift, which gave us that... Oh, oh, this is oh, no, really I good. Didn't, I didn't feel... Well, well, for me it did. And, yet, no. and then it's hit my stomach and not quite so pleasant as perhaps mm. I would have liked. Mm. So let's hope that the, the next portion of our... Right. Down our world food aisle. Now, this is... We're sticking with the Jamaican theme. Honey bun, spiced bun. And it's looking pretty good. Mmm. It, it's got... That whole soaring look about it. It looks a bit like a sort of malt loaf. Yeah, it's like a hold it. So it is like a fruit loaf, isn't it? It's a fruit loaf, and it smells spicy. So I think it definitely needs a bit of. Yeah, I've a got an urge to to butter it. When we bought it in the supermarket, right next to it, by the same company, was a can of processed cheese. It physically I mean, said on it, processed cheese. And obviously I think you meant to eat them together because we would have Christmas cake and cheese yeah. together. So clearly this so is So it must version. be a similar thing. Yeah. I was kind of tempted. I said, should we get, but then a can of processed cheese? No. Weren't so sure about that. I think So not. I think this, it ne kind of feels like it needs a bit of butter. Yes. So Butter it up, baby. I'm going to put a bit of butter. And let me get my chops around it. It smells like wine. Yeah, it does actually. I was getting that as well. How strange. There it is. Shall I give it a try? Yeah. I'm getting bananas. Bananas? Mm. I don't think there's bananas in it. The first hit was a banana-y hit. I'm not getting bananas. Ah, um, it's very bready. Mm. It's not on plate. It's, it's like a fruit bread. Spicy. It feels, it feels festive. It feels very festive. Mm. Do you think it's, it's a very bready thing i would say it's more bready than like a malt loaf right it, it does taste it's like a fruit it is that's why i got the urge to butter it i think that's definitely because the right it feels move. more like a bread than a cake it's really quite it pleasant. reminds me of the fruit breads that you can buy you know in yeah. this country so that is jamaican spiced bun very nice by honey bun can you get that where you are have you had this before we just got it in sainsbury's i mean i've never seen anything like it before it yeah. appeared very recently actually mm. when they've when they've changed things over so we've got to give that a score out of 10. um i would go probably with a seven i no 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 a seven be honest honey if you don't no 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 i think you're right because it, it's definitely edible it's got all flavors that are you just don't like eating bread and it felt like you were eating bread yes right because <laughs> bread doesn't agree no. with me at all and after having I do think, I really do think, that I have mild symptoms of IBS. And mm. um, well, that wouldn't surprise me after no. they took your stomach out yeah. and put it back in again. It... I can be excused, can't I? Not having your stomach, mild... your intestines. Yeah, having mild symptoms of IBS. So yeah, I mean, uh, no, I mean, go with a seven because it is really mm. pleasant. I don't. It's very think pleasant to eat. I don't think there's anyone out there who would not enjoy eating that. I can't imagine that. anybody wouldn't like it. Because there's not a lot of fruit in there. And it's a great big thing. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge loaf. 
So let's go with a sim. It'd be good for like if you had a big family round, you know, for a cup of tea and a slice of that of an afternoon. Lovely. So Mighty Malt gets a five. Five. And Honey Bun, Spice Bun, I just like saying it, gets a seven. Seven. Now, we were supposed oh. to be trying. <laughs> look, we've got them, we've got them. We, we have. should open one and have a look at it. Well, I don't know if we, we should. Why? Because we, um, we got two of them. But there's two in there, they're separate. Individually wrapped, look, for... Why is the inside of the wrapper damp? Oh, I don't know. I mean... We've been warned off these. I just looked at how many E numbers are in here, and it's terrifying. I think I counted 11 or 12 E numbers. I've and it says underneath, may have an adverse effect on activity and attention in children. I mean, having to put that on something that you eat is outrageous it, for me. We're just, we're very conscious. You know, Kay suffers badly with IBS and after mm. we're really concerned we'll try anything but we've never in all the things that we've tried let's, from, I mean, let's open it from at the least. Jungval to you know all the different things that we try from all over the world we've never seen anything quite so full of ease and with I mean the fact as well that on, it doesn't expire this until February and heaven knows how long it's been in the box see the other thing it's is very, as well Kate, it is very damp I've never, I've never known such a huge response from people. You know, when we've spoken about Twinkies, mm. and, and the vast majority of people have said, do not try one, haven't they? I mean, it doesn't look offensive. No, it's, I mean, everybody knows what one looks like, obviously, but it's got, like, cream in the middle. Maybe we should just have a tiny slither. Well, do, no, 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 no. Because, do you know what I'm thinking? What? The fact that you've just said, maybe we'll just have a tiny sliver. What? This should be the forfeit on the Knit or Forfeit Christmas special. You've got to eat. Well, you've got one left there, haven't we? We have one there. Whoever, do, do, does that sound like a suitable forfeit? Because I'm telling you, I really- I think it'll just taste sweet. I don't think it'll particularly have it much of a flavor. I think the forfeit should be whoever loses has to have. Well, it's not gonna kill us, I don't think, is it? Let's no. face it. Well, the fact that you were Even prepared- Even though I don't want to eat all those E numbers particularly. Well, let's do that then. We've got one left in there we haven't opened. So my hands knit are really or forfeit. sticky now. We have the forfeit. Sticky. We have the forfeit. We just need the prize, and that is to be worked on. Oh right. Yes. Okay. Coming in uh, 88, 89, in episode ninety. Nice. Yes. What did you try? What is it that you're not liking? I think it was the drink. Okay. It's made me feel a bit gippy. Well, that's interesting that it had that mm. such effect on me as well. Maybe stick clear of that drink. So yeah, I think we should adjust the score. I Maybe. think I think basically it felt like I'd just drank a spoonful of sugar, I think, and it just It's um, down to a four. Okay. Four for the mighty mod. Yeah. It's time for the Andy bits. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Neil. Are we doing that first? Yes. Fog along update. Oh yes. This is the key month now, folks. It's the first of December. We are in the home stretch. Runners, we're not gonna make it around the world. But that's fine. That's okay. That's fine. It was always, you know, about the journey rather than the destination. But I'd like to get out of Russia. Right. Now, what's interesting is, because if we get out of Russia, we'll be in Canada, oh. which would be great. Really? Yeah, yeah, because we catch a boat over the sea. Oh, gosh, I'm going to say yeah. how to work that one out. Well, we don't run across the sea. We, 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 right. we catch boats okay. from, from ports okay. to get from place to place. We're in the same place. The, the oh. knitters and the runners. Oh, right. For the first so time. So we lapped you. You, you, you. Well, no, you'd lapped us. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You, you're about to lap us now. Right. You've always been ahead, and now you're I'm about Now you're you. about to lap us. Excellent. Great. Uh, so we're in. Now we're back in a place that we were earlier on this oh. year. It's me and Giligno. Right. In Russia. We're in Russia. That's all we need. And, and we're all there. Can you believe it? Final month. Wow. Finally, we are together. So you know, runners, let's wave at the knitters as they pass us by. And go. No, we'll just go. Ha ha! Yeah. Lapping you. So runners, how many miles have we covered since we started on January the first? Twenty-one thousand five hundred ninety-three point eighty-six. So what would be really not cool? It's, it's not brilliant. Bad, is it that? What would be really cool is if we could do fifteen hundred miles which we've done before. In fact, we've done more than that before. If we can do 1,500 miles this month, we'll get to Canada. And I think that would be a real achievement. Knitters, you've covered 57,825 miles. Wow. 
That's amazing. Need I say any more? That is absolutely amazing. Now, brilliant. The knit along and the run along continues until the end of the year. And then in our January pop on the 14th of January, that's when we'll draw some prizes for the knitters. Yep. And we'll have a, a special prize for the runners as well, like we did at the halfway point. Gold patron giveaway. Cool. Yes. So the prize is... I will show you. I've got some new yarn recently and it's a new sock yarn. I'm always interested in new sock yarn. This is from Paintbox Yarns. I got mine from Love Knitting. I've never tried that yarn before. It's made in Italy actually, which is interesting. It's uh, it's like a standard sock yarn, 75-25, wool and polyamide, 390 meters. And I've got three colors to give them a try. These two, I think I'm gonna keep these two. I might use one of these for a giveaway as well, but this is the yarn. So I got, this one here is Candy Shop. Beautiful pastel colours. And this one is Passion, which is sort of pinks and greys. And then I've got this really lovely colourful one. And this is the one I'm going to use for the giveaway. And this is Arcade, which is lovely blues and yellows and oranges. And there's some grey in there and some green. And who is the winner? I don't know. Tell me. It's Diane Estes. Well, Diane Estes, you have just been our randomly drawn... Uh, winner Yay. of the gold and platinum patrons for this month. And what does she need to do, Kate? Diane, just send me a PM on Ravelry or a direct message on Instagram, however you want to do it, with your address, and I'll get that sent out to you. And we'll be doing another one. Oh, actually, because uh, we've got one for December, haven't we? Right. Uh, so we could do two in January. Oh, no, what we could do is we could on our... Let, well, we do our Christmas message. Yeah. Let's do it then. Okay. Yes, so 24th of December, Christmas message. We'll also draw the $10, the, the, the gold plus patron yeah. uh, as well. And of course, as well, 24th of December, that's the day when the All Is Calm socks are released. Yes. To everyone uh, who's enjoying the advent calendar. Brilliant. Cool. Merry Knitmas. Merry Knitmas is still going on. It's a patron knit along where we are knitting all your Christmas presents or we're just clearing our needles of projects so every time you finish either a Christmas gift or just anything that you're wanting to get off the needles ready for a fresh start in January yep post a picture in the FO thread that's on Ravelry and then we will draw for prizes in the new year and the toy cow toy knit along is going great guns there's loads of finished objects in the uh, FO thread so again that's going until the end of the year and, you know, touch wood, Mr. Fox pattern will be out in enough time for you to knit one up before Great. the end of the year. So that would be brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely. And you've got some things to show oh, as well, haven't I you? I have, I have. Oh, first of all, I will just mention, if you're watching this podcast before, before like Sunday morning, then I'm having a yarn update on Saturday so that'll be tomorrow if you're watching this on Friday is tomorrow is Saturday the 2nd of December 7 p.m. GMT and this is the only reason I'm really mentioning it is because this is the last update before the end of the year I'm not going to do another one now until January so I just thought I'd show you a few of the yarns that are going into the shop just so that if you're watching this straight away you might want to grab a skein it's, it's Christmas so we should have a carol so bring us some figgy pudding. So bring <laughs> okay, I will. Yes. I have dyed up some more figgy pudding, and this time I've done it on MCN. Fingering way, MCN. Oh, it's so beautiful. It really is. Can you see how squishy it is? It's such, it's, it's ploofy, the yarn. It's just beautiful, and it dyed up really lovely on MCN. And then I've got a few sock sets going in, which I, I really enjoy doing sock sets. And then I thought of this one recently because I had, if you remember, I, tried, I, I did have a bit of a failed attempt at knitting some Jaws socks earlier in the year. And I knit them with a fish lips kiss heel. And I ended up ripping back that heel because I just didn't like it. Something weird happened and I ended up just ripping out the whole sock. So I just had the, and I always, you know, I thought, oh, I must go back and do that again. And I just thought, you know what, I'm going to try dyeing up some sets. So I have done that. So I've dyed up a 100 gram skein of these fantastic sort of sea colours. And there is some dark, there is some grey in there as well for the shark. And then a mini of the blood red. <laughs> 
but any Jaws fans, I think you'll really enjoy those. So there's some sets of those and that's on a sparkle base. And then I dyed up this pink recently. Oh, and I just love it. And I dyed a mini, then thought, oh, I'm gonna dye a mini to match. So I've got this beautiful pink and then this mini to go with it. Again, it's on a sparkle base. And this pink is called Perfect Pink Socks because I just think that is the perfect pink sock color. And then this mini is chocolate milk. And I think they look lovely together. So there's some of those. And then I did the same, but with a blue. So this is perfect blue socks. And it's just this gorgeous, soft blue. Oh, it's just such a pretty shade. Blues are very difficult to transfer on the screen. It's washing out probably quite a bit. And then I've dyed up this gorgeous buttery yellow to go with it, which I've called butter. So there's some of those as well. What? Nothing. An imaginative name. Yes. Is that what you were thinking? I was thinking that, yes. Thank you very much for that. I love pretty tonals, especially when you're doing like a lace sock, you know, or ones with lots of texture, things like that. So that's the yarns that are going to be going into the shop Saturday the 2nd, 7pm GMT. Do you have anything else? The last thing I have is I purchased some yarn from the Yarn Lab UK. The lovely lady's name is Lana, it's on Etsy. And I saw these little mini sets, she just lots of Harry Potter themed um, sets. And I saw these ones and I thought, oh, I've got to get those. There's 50 grams in each, so in each of these there's 10 grams of, of each. And the colourways is called the second generation, so it's the children of the main characters, as far as I understand. There's Rose, Hugo, Lily Luna, Albus Severus and Teddy Lupin which is Bryony's favourite because of course she's madly in love with Professor Lupin, in case you didn't know. So I've got two, because I thought I'd knit her socks, but now what I'm thinking is that I might double the yarns and knit her some fingerless mitts, because she really loves the fingerless mitts that she's got. And I think having these on her hands rather than her feet, she'll be able to look at the colours and because it's Harry Potter. I think she'll really like that. So when I bought these, Lana sent me an extra set to use as a prize for one of our knit alongs. So she sent me this fabulous set. And these are 20 gram minis, so there's 100 grams all together. And this is her neon mini set. So thank you, Lana, these are beautiful. So these will be a prize in one of our two knit alongs that we've got going on at the moment. Beautiful. And also as well, we were sent Beardy Chill's latest pattern as well for yes. some prizes too. Yes. So they'll be going. Glenn. Yes, they'll be going into. Uh, I think it was the fog along. We we're going to do one, and we we're right. also going to do one for one of the the Christmas ones okay, as well, brilliant. which is just lovely. Yeah. So that really is it. Now, Silver Plus patrons, we'll see you tomorrow and every day right the way up until the twenty fourth of December, when Bronze patrons will join us for the Christmas message, uh, the drawing of the Gold Plus. Um, uh, patron prize and also yeah. the release of the All Is Calm Socks. So that's super exciting. So we've got now 23 more videos of all sorts of fun and excitement. So can't wait to share all that with you. Everyone else, we will see you in two weeks when we will be going back down the Desert Island Discs mm -hmm. and we will be looking at our favourite Christmas songs. Do you remember we had two spaces left for Kay and I to pick our two favourite Christmas songs? And we will also be doing more Bakery Bears bucket list. Yes. Oh yes. And then the episode after that, Knit or Forfeit is back. Gosh. Exciting. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks everyone. And we will see you in two weeks for more. Shuffle once in